Hey YouTube, JP Dilla. This is going to be part three of the Emerson EC-133 uh, television repair. Yesterday I got my NTE 410 uh, video processor IC. So we're going to pop this sucker in and see if that takes care of our loss of color problem and smearing and all that sort of thing. Somebody had mentioned in the previous video about the uh, B-Boost capacitor. Uh, I have changed that, but there was no improvement in the symptom, and the ripple on the power supply is very low. So I don't think that's it. Uh, although I could be missing something. We're going to pop the IC in and see if that brings things back into shape. And if so, then uh, we'll continue doing the setups, and if not, then we'll troubleshoot it a little more. So in any case, let's get it in there. So thankfully, this thing is very easy to get to. Uh, it's just this big guy right here. There was some sort of modification done. It looks like a diode of some kind, uh, which still checks okay. Uh, I removed the brown glue previously, thinking that might have eaten a foil trace or two, but all these foil traces ohm out, so I don't think that's uh, it either. But uh, it's just got no, no color. And as the longer we ran it, the worse that the uh, video symptoms got. So, given that the voltage to the IC is correct and the uh, B Boost power supply looks good, I really think that is all that's left is the IC. But I guess time will tell after we change it and figure that out. So, uh, we're going to get to desoldering this and then uh, we're going to pop the new IC in. And normally I'd use a high temperature uh, broad tips kind of solder gun but I don't want to overheat these foil traces because these boards are not known for stability so we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way uh, with a 60 watt iron and some uh, solder wick and get it out and get the new one in all right I know this isn't the greatest of camera angles but I hope you guys can see this and we're just gonna Take some wick the old fashioned way and probably end up doing it one pin at a time. The trick is, is to use a really hot iron and I'm constantly trimming away my solder wick because otherwise the solder will creep up the wick into the area that I'm working and then it's kind of self-defeating at that point. And when we put the new IC in, we have to be very careful how we apply the heat because if we just solder the pins linearly, like I'm desoldering it, I'll very likely superheat a portion of the chip and cause a failure. Uh, it's very important to apply heat in kind of a zigzag or opposite corner. And if I'm shaking the camera, I apologize, but my bench isn't exactly totally stable and setting the camera on this uh, lamp stand thing makes it a little shaky. I wouldn't have room next to me to set up a tripod anyway, so this is just how it's going to have to work. And there are people keep screaming at me I should get tripods, but then, see, I move around the equipment a lot and the tripod would get in my way. Uh, sometimes I don't think people realize the amount of manipulation that you have to take part in to uh, work on this stuff because you have to be able to see parts of the machine from all angles at times but here it's just a question of confinement if you're watching on the HTML5 player uh, you can run this at double speed just to speed this up because I can pretty much tell this is going to be slow and boring Once I get the solder out, we'll check the free movement of all the pins. 
and then I should be able to get a pick underneath the IC and lift it from the board. I would love to have something like a chip quick for an IC like this, but I'd be making a huge investment for probably two or three uses at most. Alright, so now that we've got the majority of it desoldered, uh, I'm just going to take an X-Acto and peel up the terminals. Kind of make sure they're free moving in their holes. I got this one here, which is going to be a problem because it's got that thing attached to it. And that's attached to one, two, three, four, five up from the bottom. Got to remember that. Okay. Those are all moving that guy there. He's not quite out yet. Okay. And then this guy at the very top corner. You want to make sure that these are as loose as possible, otherwise you could damage the foil trays getting the old part out and the new part in. In fact, you could even push on it just to check and see that all of these are loose. Don't push too hard, otherwise you could have a lead go through your skin and that's, yeah, it's never any fun. So pushing on this, this side goes through the board. This side, there are still a couple of points that are attached. Like this one here. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so now I can push the IC completely through the board. <clears throat> and uh, let's pull it out and get the new one in. Alright, so given the ease that I can push this through the board, I should just be able to lift it out, but my fat finger doesn't fit in there very well. So here is our old IC. No signs of uh, severe overheating or death. Oops, just dropped it. Yep, no signs of death. So I guess it's just a matter of putting the new one in. Uh, I've already checked the components around the IC. Like these capacitors, uh, little fusible resistor there. Uh, those have been checked. They're all pretty much okay. Um, I didn't check the running frequency of that crystal oscillator there, but we'll look into that if we still don't have any color after changing this. The rest of the board looks clean, there's no evidence of a fluid spill. So let's get the new chip in. So here's the new guy. Um, it's important when you've got a part that's been sitting for a long time. This one's been sitting in a bag for a long time. You can see the leads are kind of oxidized. So I'm going to scrape these before I install the chip. Uh, that way we'll have a nice clean connection that the solder will stick to very quickly and I don't have to worry about burning this up. So uh, I'm going to 
scrape these with an exacto and make sure they're nice and shiny oxide free and then we'll uh, finagle it into the holes and then we'll solder it up okie dokie so after wrestling with uh, the pin alignment a little bit there it is it's sitting in there we just gotta solder it up and once that's done then I can turn it on and hope for the best alright so here we are let's go ahead and solder this up remember that that little modification is attached five up from the bottom I'm going to do them in groups of three furthest from each other on the chip die as possible because again you don't want you don't want the heat build up to kill the chip no sense in murdering what we just put in here alright let's do the next three Kind of like torquing down lug nuts on a car. Notice how I don't keep the heat on that pin for very long. Alright, so that's soldered in. And let's attach our little diode thing or whatever this is to this number five pin here. Assuming it's going to cooperate with me. that's not going to come loose it isn't and shine a nice bright light there and check my solder work you guys probably can't see that looks good all right let's assemble it and uh, let's go ahead and power it up all right the chips installed moment of truth Well, we are back to color bars. Uh, interesting how the uh, auto color. All right, so something still isn't right. We have color, it's just not synchronizing. So kind of back to the way that we were before. So we needed to do some more troubleshooting, particularly on that 3.58 megahertz oscillator. So now the thing to do is hook up a uh, isolation transformer in our frequency counter. And we're gonna actually see if this thing is running at 3.58 megahertz. I find it funny that I still can't turn the color up or down, which is bizarre. Even with the auto color on or off, uh, the color control has no effect. It's fixed, absolutely fixed. So that could be part of it too. There could just be stuff not getting to that chip. 
So it wasn't the chip, although, I don't know. Uh, time to play around with it some more. I'm trying to think of what that could be. It could be the crystal's bad, it could be a variety of other things. Let's find out. Alright, so regarding finding so far, I'm running the thing here. And one thing I notice is that the grounds aren't unified. For example, the main ground here on the power supply, if I go to the other ground over here, there's no voltage potential here. Well, there's 12 millivolts, but there's also 40 volt or 40 ohms of difference between the main ground and this ground. Likewise, if I go over here, 42 ohms. If I go over here, this is supposed to be ground. 45 ohms. 38 ohms. 38. I mean, this is just something about this is weird. 35. So, there's either the ground planes are separate due to some optic coupler or something like that, or there's something else going on that I'm not privy to. Um, like this ground back here, this is pretty close to potential. This is only 8 or 9 ohms difference. Uh, likewise, this shield here, which is grounded, this is at ground. So, 1 ohm, yeah. So, there's some sort of ground integrity problem on this board that's not quite right. And that's probably why we're getting deficiencies. Uh, also, uh, that's probably why we're not getting color control because if this is supposed to be at ground yeah I'm not getting a ground reference anywhere so I think that's really where our problem lies we need to restore ground integrity and then very likely that will be the cure for the problem somebody mentioned grounds on the board earlier and I just didn't put much thought into it because I was still getting voltages uh, but coming, coming over to the IC here, I mean, I've got 14 volts supplying the IC with like 25 millivolts of ripple. So that power supply is happy. But then, you know, if we look here, which is supposed to be supposed to be ground, I've got quite a wow. Really? That's just all over the place as far as the ground connection there. So something's not right here we need to find there's another crack in this board somewhere I need to find but once I do that very likely it will come back to life so I'm gonna see if I can hunt down all the bad grounds and uh, tie them together and see what happens then okay so here's where we're at with this thing uh, I've been over this board uh, many times the 200 volt V plus line is clean uh, there's no ripple on it. It's 195 volts actually. Uh, I've checked the the 12 volt regulator uh, is down here. Uh, 130 volts is solid, no ripple. Uh, I've checked the feedback loop from the horizontal output sync pulses, and the sync pulses look good, uh, but it still has that kind of bright bar here on the left and it kind of acts like there's hum in the color circuit but there's not I can't test it I've checked all the grounds on the board too and the ground integrity looks happy uh, I can adjust the movement of the color bars with the tin control you can see them kind of shift there up and down up and down up and down so the oscillators just not locking so my next thought is, is okay, let's get a color crystal in there, and I'm waiting for that, but I, that still doesn't explain the, the video problem there on the left. So uh, I'm going to pull out my subber tuner and see if by some weird happenstance that the reason why this thing is funky is because of the tuner, because when I adjust the tuner, we can see that the colors get a little more intense and that bar on the left you can see it shift in and out it moves which I thought was peculiar and likewise if I tune in the other direction and we kill the color 
the bar goes away, I no longer have that bright bar on the left. So it makes me wonder if there's something in the tuner or the IF that's causing this weird abnormality. And you can see the bar bends over like it's a, a tuner problem. So that's weird. So I'm going to grab my subber tuner, it hasn't been used in a while, hopefully it still runs, and then we're going to hook it up and see if we get any different results. So even with the subber tuner, you can see I can fine tune it and get my rolling color bars back. And there's that shifting bar that goes right and left. But that hum is still there, it's very persistent. You can see that it's a... Uh, kind of dark up in here and bright down in here and dark up in here, dark at the top, bright at the bottom. So I don't think the tuner's the cause, but that was just a quick way to find out. These little subber tuners are kind of useful if you don't blow them up. I've had like three of them and sometimes you forget to use the isoformer and you cook it. Uh, but that's what that's for today. So not it. Um, it's weird though how we got this dark area like there's a power supply problem I've even exchanged some caps on just kind of a, a preemptive basis which didn't solve anything but according to the scope and my meters there's no hum on this thing so it's very strange how it's behaving and I wish there was a way I could just inject a composite signal up in here to fiddle with that and obviously I could tweak the IF a little bit I don't know if anybody's been in here or not but it's kind of weird that it would just all of a sudden start doing that so it's very strange uh, I'm kind of at a loss for this one I've been up and down it and I still can't figure it out so yeah we will poke around a little bit more but ain't the tuner okay so while poking around in the IF strip uh, I found something very disturbing if we take a look down here in this shielded box you can see that we got two tuned transformers. They have cores in them. Right? Okay, we've got cores here. What happened to that one? The core's missing. I mean, it's really missing. If we look deep down in here, it's like missing, missing. Ain't there. Somebody took the core out. Yeah, can't really see down in there that far. But the core's missing. And the threads are all chooched up like somebody was messing with it. There's no core in the bottom of that. And so that's L603. And if we come up to the uh, You got the input from your tuner here. You got 601, 602. What's 603? Where is it? It's your video IF amp. I'm not seeing it. Uh, let's look around. 608. They don't even show it. You got 601 and you've got 602. Where's 603? Oh, here we go. So 603 is supposed to be a, a tuned circuit that feeds into your IF input for the uh, IF AGC video amp. So if we're getting incorrect bandpass here, we could be losing our color sync information. So that's interesting and then that leaves and goes through our video amplifier stages and then goes to the uh, video input on the IC here. And all the voltages on that are maybe a vo uh, half a volt high but they, they check out. So that's, that's significant. Uh, the fact that we don't have we don't have any core in L603 I think that's significant. I'm not sure what to do about that. I'll have to dig through my stuff and see if I can find a another core to fit in there and then see if tweaking it will 
will change my color at all, but that's that's significant. So I wonder if the owner pulled that out of there or whoever he bought this from was messing with it, couldn't figure it out, pulled the core out. Uh, who knows? Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. That's a transformer there, that T328. So, yeah, I got to find a core, and then we can pop a core in it, adjust it, and see if we can get our color back. And that may be, that may explain why there's such poor IF response, too, or video response. You get all these lines of peaking here, that, and the IF is very tunable. So that's, eh, that concerns me. So I'm going to go dig through my boxes of stuff and see if I can find a ferrite core to stick in there and see if adjusting that will tweak it any. So I've got this old tuner board which I pulled one of these cores out of. I had a couple of other ferrite cores but they were just too large so I've got the core sunk in there about halfway through its travel and I'm gonna see if that makes any changes. I have my doubts but at this point I'm willing to try a little bit. I'll just clear this clutter up out of the way. Sometimes it's handy to have junk lying around. Let's see what it does now, if anything. Now that we've got a ferrite core in there. Well, that shifted the bar over. Now it's over here. Interesting, huh? Hmm. Very interesting. All right, when I tune the core, we do get a shift in our uh, color bars they are moving probably not of any significance though trying to see if that bar on the IF is moving doesn't appear to be though so that really didn't solve anything either Very interesting. Uh, also, I don't see any red in the color bars. Normally with the rainbow you'd see red, but here I'm seeing green and blue. And there's still that darkened area up top, which is just perplexing me at the moment because I don't understand why it's doing that with clean power and good grounds. So yeah, I'm a little stumped on this one. All right, so just a few moments later, I'm now back to a black and white picture and the hum quote unquote hum bar is still there uh, which again is I can tune it I grab the fine tuning and I go too far off one way the bar moves and becomes highlighted and all that mess so I don't know what's going on there. And we've got the dark area up at the screen again. And it's like we've got bad power supply voltages, but we don't. Uh, we had that missing core in the IF, but replacing that only helps the video response mildly. So I don't think that's it. Sync pulses look good. There's no 35 oscillator though so I kind of wondering if replacing the crystal will fix that but then there's the other issues at hand and wrapping on the board changes nothing I don't get any flickering of the screen or anything nothing changes so that kind of precludes poor connections I was over my work and I also checked all the remaining capacitors in the IF and video amplifier circuit. I actually removed them from the circuit and they all test okay. There's not any that are leaky or shorted or that have bad ESR. It's just there's something horribly wrong with this thing and I can't figure it out right now. I might figure it out later but for now I can't seem to figure out why it's misbehaving. Uh, the fact that my color is all gone now, I might look at voltages on the color killer, but it's very strange. Uh, all the voltages on the jungle I see here 
this will focus. All of those are within spec of each other. Maybe about a half a volt up higher than what they say, but that's because our line voltage is a little high. The IF uh, is working, and I'm getting what appears to be good waveforms coming out of the uh, IF, IC, and video amplifiers. So yeah, I'm a little stumped on this one. The power supply and all the voltages coming off the flyback are nice and clean and strong. Uh, I'm at a loss, and I'm kind of running out of time on this one. And I think I just might bow out of it because although it's fixable, how much time do you want to invest in it, really? I think it's just kind of a loss. And oh, my little generator shut off. And see, I've got this. This is new, too, uh, which doesn't seem to go away, except you're in higher band. And again, subbing the tuner didn't change anything. And if I go to like a full rainbow, I don't even get uh, color bars now. There's no rolling color bars anymore. So something is progressing and getting worse. I just don't know what it is. Can't figure it out. So if you guys who are XTV techs or anything have seen something like this before, uh, maybe you could point me in the right direction. But otherwise, I can't seem to figure this one out. Everything says that it should run, but it ain't. And now I've got no color oscillator either, so got to figure that one out. Anyway, if there's a part four, you'll see it. Otherwise, uh, other stuff to come soon.